Now, in, in that context, <coughs> in the context of the, the what's the term, the um, erosion of the field's authority, right? What happens is that the next thing that shows up is, well, hey, wait a second, I mean, what we need is a team, right? And then you don't only have an architect, but you have 16 other architects coming up because it's supposed to be, you know, this very famous thing about the creative tension that you, you know, by putting together many people, you, yeah, it's all true. But at the end of the day, fortunately or unfortunately, all of this goes through one brain at a certain moment, right? The problem is that, just to, you, can I say this too? Because this is really mean. <laughs> what happens is that in this country, during the 50s, people invented this notion of the corporate office, right? And that because you're large, I mean, you, you probably remember Skidmore Owens and Merrill. I never met them, but I met um, Bonshaft. And, you know, he was kind of like the last person that actually knew how to, where the pencils were. I mean, forget how to use it, but, you know, <laughs> where they were in the Netflix, office. Right? The only rich architect in America. It's a, it, it, that's exactly right. And so then yeah, you, oh, get all, Pacific. you get all of this thing, you get all of that, and then you send the notion <laughs> that because you're large and because you've done all of these things, which you haven't done, is your grandparents that did it, right? Or your, the grand the grand grandparents did it? Then you can go and get a job because you have experience. What happens then? All of this gets filtered, and that's a lucky part for all of you. If you get at the right time and and and, and, and in the right place, somebody's gonna you apply for one of these positions in one of these big firms, and all of a sudden you have to do one of these things, and you know zilch, right? And then what do you do? You just do something, and then there are all of these monsters behind you that try to sell it, right? And that's it. That's the reason why you rehash things, because you know the effect of this formaking phase in 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 the in the in the in education over the last you know 15 years or so has been unbelievably torturous. I mean, to, all of this is to enter a profession which cannot pay you at your entry level, not even 50% of your debt because of the tuition that you pay here. And that's a fact. I mean, you know, how could that happen? I mean, just explains to me why if you're a paralegal, you make more money than a, a person like an architect, right, that has 15 years of experience, and you come out of the, the law school and you make more money than this guy. That, by the way, is the guy that generates the lawsuits, right? Because you know <laughs> that, that you then charge $600 an hour to, to cure or to do something with them or nothing. But So there is a displacement of the economic base of the whole construction industry. <coughs> I mean, just to add another consultancy. Do you, you, you know this new formation called the design managers? People that are, it's a profession. I mean, you look in the internet. There's a, there's a new profession called design managers. And there are people that fail at being <laughs> construction managers, <laughs> architects, <laughs> and consultants for architects and everything. So what I'm going to do is just to the, manage the design process. And then I charge a fee to tell people when they can deliver something and, you know, whether they need more options for this and for that. That's a design manager. And these, these are, all of these things come from the famous 8.5% that in an average would be the design fee. So at the end, you keep all the responsibility, you know, and that's the reason why the, I mean, I, this, you guys are into money, right? So you should know this thing. You, the reason why the, 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 the insurance premium in architecture has doubled over the last five years isn't because it's difficult to insure them, is because we screw up. How could you not screw up? I can tell you stories of my office in which I screw up royally, <laughs> but royally. I mean, I did this convention center in Boston. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it's the largest building in Massachusetts. It's just absolutely yes. gigantic. And it has one freaking roof that goes from here to the end of the school, right? <laughs> and I engineered the whole thing and so on, and then I had a team, a team 
right? <laughs> and the team had a project manager, and the project manager hired people like you coming out of school. And, you know, somebody drew the details. I drew all the basic details, and then there is a claim for something like $23 million because the thing leaked, right? And I say, it can't leak. I mean, you know, it's curved. I mean, I know it doesn't leak. And then they showed me the detail of the gutter. And this was like if you put the, 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 um, <clears throat> the uh, Mississippi River, right, <laughs> on a pipe this big, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the pipe well, it wasn't that big. It was this big. But it was literally to be this big, right? Now, anybody, anybody that has had a leak, and I had so many leaks that you would not believe, <laughs> I live in a house that I, I lived in a house in my previous life in South America, in a house that I built myself when I was 21, which I decided to paint it in a very dark chocolate color. And it had very little insulation and started leaking day one. And I decided that I could never control the leak, so I did a landscape of rivers inside of the house. I, got, I made channels in the walls for the water to come. And I said that this was actually literally an absolutely brilliant architectural idea. It was an absolute failure, you see? Why did I do that? Because I didn't know anything, you see? So, it, and that's it. so this guy that did this, you know, gutter, right, was $23 million this gutter. Literally, you, you know, it was a change for. I mean, these are the kinds of things that happen. So, for instance, if you and and if you if you this this engage from the extraordinary responsibility, not that anybody pays you for having this responsibility, right? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't pay you for that, and it's not his mistake. And I'm not saying it because they're friend. It's because you have no way of demonstrating that you really do know. And it's not because you know personally. <coughs> the profession doesn't know anything. So, I mean, if you, I mean, imagine, for the, the, from the point in which postmodernism became like the fashion, right, up until it died, it didn't last, luckily, that long, people were selling yellow papers, right? I mean, yellow trays. I mean, you know, you, you just do it like this, and then somebody in Canada... HLW, I mean, Adams, some people like that are the, um, what is it, the executive architects that try to interpret all of that and put it into some buildable thing. A complete disaster. And if you add to this the iconicity, then you have a time bomb. And that's what I think we are today. And the effects are absolutely horrible because what is happening now is that the enemy which is basically everybody that doesn't want to see architecture because they have this particular ideology that is more expensive and that it doesn't contribute anything, is being <coughs> raised to the point of veracity. And, you know, these people seem to be right, and they're taking over. And I can give you an example of that just recent. That is really astonishing that you're... All, 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 all of a sudden, you have done all of this in order to generate value, and then somebody else comes and wants to change it to this sort of kind of completely uh, a run of the mill, totally ABC uh, approach for absolutely no reason. Understanding also that if you go that route, you lose the only thing that the project really has, which is additional square footage. This is a, uh, another project, but it is this kind of situation in which. You literally find yourself, particularly after being around some time, uh, either um, excited about the challenge of with an extraordinary desire to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you in it? I say vague, I see a, 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 this is a psychological conversation that I don't have any problem with. She says you may not like to fish, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like to fish, so, but I like to sail. Okay. I can not only do that. So, 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 so why do you stay in architecture versus sail? Because I think that ultimately, well, first is the challenge. I think that it, it, if you don't take it as a challenge, I think that 
is really one of the most frustrating fields in the world. I mean, you know, it's really like you can't be, you don't understand exactly where you ended up, right? I mean, I, I, I remember like today, and this is less now, but it was very, very prominent about uh, 10 years ago, sitting down with people that came from Harvard and Cornell and Yale and everything, that would tell you, oh, I didn't know that this was like this. And I said, well, no, of course you didn't. You thought it was something else. It's not, it's this. <laughs> and by the way, your salary is $32,000 a year, right? And the guy lives in a place in which he apartment costs him four and a half, right? So how the hell is he going to make it, right? <coughs> so, so if you, end, to me, this is something that I think what keeps me in is the fact that, well, actually, let me put it this way. I don't have a shot, or maybe I can't, I don't know if I do have a shot for not being in, which is, uh, I mean, retraining at my age is sort of difficult. <laughs> I, I have some other interests which are really, um, not income producing, but that, that are interesting, but you gotta keep up. <coughs> but the most important thing is because I think I have grown this thoroughly oversized sense of responsibility. And uh, uh, it's just a, who's gonna do it if you don't do it? The guy, it's, I mean, they are unbelievably good architects, don't get me wrong, it's not that I, I'm the only one in here, but you really can count them like, this, right? I mean, and it's, it's, it, it, if you let this thing go out, this thing is going to be a disaster. Architecture is the only media that you cannot turn off. If you are uncultivated, you can never read a book, you can never go to a movie, you can never listen to a concert. But this crap, you suffer no matter what, even if you're blind, right? It's, even if you're blind, you suffer, right? And it is in the hands of people that are beyond merchants or people that are complete nuts, right? And, and in somehow, I mean, it, I think there is a medium term in which you can really feel happy with the result. And the only way in which I know that I may be happy is that if the people that are in it are happy. And, and that's a very, completely different than the awards and, and, the, uh, and the publications and all of that. And it's, a, it's, a, it's being very, very distorted by all of that. It's, a, it's a, a field that it is not the cycle. I mean, I used to have a lot of friends in the advertising industry, right? I mean, where you, I learned this word pitch, that you go and pitch something, that are now is typical with architect pitching for that job. In the uh, advertising industry, right, you pitch a job every week. Right? And the job that you pitch for is with luck, one year of investment in airtime, right? This thing takes two to three years to prefigure, four to five to build, and ten to know if you really made it right or not. <laughs> and if you really count that, that in a normal sort of lifespan, I mean, you know, yeah, you, I, you have, 30, 40 chances at this. And it, it's a very, that that's a frightening thing. I mean, it's like what Robert De Niro told me one day, you know, for every job in acting in movies, there are 10,000 people that can do it. 10,000 actors that can do it, and there are many more that cannot do it. But there are 10,000 people, I mean, he was, when he was the head of the union, and he said, true statistic. If you look at our profession, it's completely disjointed at that level too. I mean, you know, is there, is there a, you're going to tell me that there's absolutely zero way to generate a sense of performance in this, in this profession, that you perform well? I mean, isn't that the way, the way people have always taught or have always elevated themselves in any profession? If you're a doctor, right? How could you how could you teach, you know, a heart operation if you haven't done it? I mean, you, know, you can go and go over the cadaver and all that, but it's a different thing, right? I mean, you see, and that's to me the the big the big dilemma here. That is a is it, and the only solution for that 
is in places like this. <clears throat> because if you don't come out of a place like this with a sense of what kind of pond are you sinking into, uh, then it's criminal for the young mind as well as from the old mind. And it's criminal for the profession. I mean, you know, the kid that drew that, drew that, that pipe, that drainage pipe, you know, should, should go back to first year. I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody told him how big is the... Now you can say also, what the heck, where were you? I don't know where I was, but I mean, I, I, <laughs> I paid the twenty three. <laughs> or the insurance company. But I said, is that, is that kind of a problem? And it is a profession. It is a, it, you cannot be in, in something other than a profession when you're dealing with this volume of economic power. I mean, it's a professional field. It's not an artistic field. I mean, it's not that you can go and do this and that and think tomorrow. I mean, all great. I mean, as a matter of fact, I would love to be an artist, but I'm not. I, you know, you are an architect. And that if you don't understand that per particular personality type, I mean, and if you don't explain to people that that's what it requires, because, you know, everybody knows about the competitiveness, everybody knows about the cutthroat. There are other professions which are equally or even more cutthroat than this. The problem here is that if you, if you go out and somebody gives you this role in a $200 million movie and you're a bomb, you don't work again in your life, regardless of how pretty you are. You don't, right? I mean, you, you have to act, right? I mean, you can act up to here. It's true you can act up to here. But if you act to here, so there is a level of standard, right? I mean, yes, I, you know, Cameron Diaz. I mean, you know, what? I mean, is this an actress? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, has a good physique and it's pretty and it's fun, right? But she acts. I mean, up to that level, right? I mean, you know, you wouldn't put her in mother courage, but I mean, it's, it just covers that level, right? And that, that supports $200 million in value, right? But if she's me, if I go at more or less, right? <laughs> anyway. I say, I am. I'm just going to make a few comments. Yeah. And then we're through. I know that none of you people want to be lawyers. <laughs> no question about it. And I don't think you'd make very good lawyers anyway. Wrong. <laughs> Completely wrong. Yeah, we I can mean, make much better lawyers than the lawyer. <laughs> much better lawyers. Anyway. Uh, Sorry. Raphael. <laughs> no, Raphael is a really great architect and a great human being, as you notice. Uh, he could use plastic buckets for the leaks. They are not That's pretty. Years the rivers ago, is better. Years ago, <laughs> years ago, when Frank Lloyd Wright did the Napa County uh, um, uh, Municipal Building, he built it. He built a bridge across two hills, <coughs> and uh, I guess they didn't uh, build any. Any uh, they didn't build them solid enough. He he was always his own engineer, and it was done by smell basically. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, it sagged, and of course it leaked. And they wrote a letter to him, uh, telling him that they had this leaky office building, and he sent them a whole stack of plastic bags. <laughs> so, there are, there's ways to handle these problems. <laughs> and, when, and when Frank Lloyd Wright came up to Michigan, I don't know whether I told you this story or not, and spoke to us, this is many, many years ago, uh, he came to speak about architecture, and of course, and we were, you know, at the time he was the he was our idol, you know. And he came and he looks at us like this with a skull with this. He had this cape. cape on, a big hat. He wore the hat and the cape in the building. <laughs> and he stood on the stage. This was at the architectural. We had a, 
at the architectural school that we had an auditorium. It wasn't very large, but we all fit it. And he says, you all want to be architects, huh? Well, yeah, he says. There are only three ways you can make it. First way, you've got a chance if a rich uncle dies and leaves you his money. The second, you can marry a rich woman. And third, you can start to death. That was his advice. <laughs> so, Pretty much. Pretty much. Women are not that rich nowadays either. <laughs> anyway, so he. Uh, uh, but it's great. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I hope that it's not going to be uh, too so, crazy. Anyway. Well, this isn't the end of the day today. We actually have Mr. Vignoli tonight at 7 p.m. For a continuation. What are you going to do tonight? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get him to draw for us. Would you all like to see some drawing? Yeah. And, yes. um, and uh, you know, I, I think I think it's going to be a very fun conversation, whatever whatever it's going to be tonight. And uh, so uh, let us please thank Mr. Vignoli.